Hello, I'm Laura Wazalowski, and I have a new book from CNT Publishing. It's called Playful Freeform Embroidery. There are six projects in the book, and the theme of the book is how to take a story or a proverb or even a saying and how to convert it and illustrate it using freeform hand embroidery. And here is a sneak peek of what's inside. In the introductory chapters of Playful Freeform Embroidery, we talk about the tools and materials needed to create freeform embroideries and the projects in the book. We also talk about the types of fabrics that we're using. I work with 100% wool fabrics or colorful felt fabrics with at least a 20% wool content. The recommended embroidery thread is pearl cotton in sizes 8 and 12. This thread has a slight sheen, sits up on the fabric, giving you lots of texture, and holds up well to intense stitchery. Both solid and variegated thread colors are used. In the first chapter, I show the reader my method of how to convert a design idea into a freeform embroidery, from sketching out design ideas to the creation of a simple pattern to the transfer of those shapes to fabric. Readers learn the process of how to illustrate their own designs in stitchery. And then there are six fun projects to make. I show the reader how to create them from transferring the patterns given in the book to the very final embroidery stitch. There are friends chatting, a whirling paintbrush, and a dancing bird. A teapot is pouring an endless cup of tea, a lush garden blooms at night, and ladybugs frolic at the nut house. Here's more about the playful freeform embroidery projects. A friend's house is based on the proverb, a road to a friend's house is never long. It's made with wool and felt fabrics and pearl cotton threads. Here you see our two friends, a sheep and a bird. They're chatting over the fence. The sheep is made with felt and the little bird is made with freestanding stitchery. One of the challenges in making this design was figuring out how to make the straight lines of stitching for the fence rails and posts. As you know, it isn't easy marking wool or felt fabrics with pens or pencils. So can you guess the solution for marking straight lines on a wool fabric? Why, painter's tape, of course. Inspired by my grandson's love of painter's tape when making his creations, I realized that this tape with a low tack was perfect for constructing styrofoam airplanes or making a straight line on fabric. This tip on how to stitch a straight line on fabric is one of several tips sprinkled throughout playful freeform embroidery. Painter's tape comes in a variety of widths. I use the quarter inch size. To make a straight line, place the tape on the fabric where you want the line of stitching to fall. Then stitch right next to the tape line. I'm using a stem stitch here, but any linear stitch like the chain stitch or back stitch will work. When you've completed the stitching, just peel the tape off and have a straight line of stitching. Because it's a low tack tape, it lifts off easily, doesn't leave a residue, and doesn't stretch the fabric. Painter's tape. It's the hand and brother's friend. Do you know that phrase, painting the town? To illustrate it, I placed a big paintbrush in the center of a village of tiny little houses. Each house in painting the town is made with freestanding embroidery. They're not made with fabric shapes. And each house is of a different design, so the reader can explore a variety of stitch combinations and color combinations. In the book, I show you how to transfer the pattern shapes for the house to the background fabric, and then how to stitch each individual house step by step. Here you see the step outs that were photographed and used to show the steps to make this house. 
Readers could also make just one of the houses, like this. This design is called Little House in the Woods and is featured on the cover of the book. Directions for making Little House in the Woods are not in the book, but they are available on my online class from Creative Spark called Little House in the Woods. Green Tea with Penelope is based on a story. It's a story about my mother and her tradition of taking a break in the afternoon for a pot of tea and a bit of gossip. I mean, conversation. Family stories like this are an excellent resource for embroidery designs. Green Tea with Penelope is also a wonderful opportunity to explore a variety of stitch combinations. The pot and each cup and saucer is embroidered in a variety of patterns. Imagine an eclectic place setting of dishes and you get the idea. There's also this cheerful edging around the design cut with a pinking blade in the rotary cutter and stitched with a fly stitch. You'll find detailed instructions in the book on adding this decorative edging to other designs too. And in the gallery section of the book, I've included examples of other embroideries to inspire the reader. Here you see a variation of this method of edging a design in a piece called Bloom. I've added French knots in Bloom in the peak of the pinked edges of the fabric. And thinking back on it, maybe I should have added French knots around green tea with Penelope. But that's the fun part of creating embroidery. You can always add more stitching or easily snip out a mistake. A common phrase like on pins and needles can also trigger an embroidery design idea. When I hear that phrase on pins and needles, I immediately imagine a little bird flying into my sewing room, snatching up the strawberry on the pincushion, thinking he's found a juicy treat, and then dancing on the pin cushion full of pins and needles. Designing on pins and needles allowed me to come up with several new stitch ideas for the reader. One idea was to stack fly stitches to make the leaves on the tomato. Using this variegated pearl cotton green thread adds interest and spark to the tomato shape. Another fun part of the design is the tablecloth. I use that same painter's tape tip to lay out a grid for the tablecloth, then used a size 8 pearl cotton thread and filled in the grid with scattered seed stitches, alternating thread colors in the squares. The scattered seed stitch adds terrific texture to the embroidered piece. And the directions for making the scattered seed stitch and other stitches used in the projects are illustrated in diagrams found in a final chapter of the book. I love to garden, although my idea of gardening is to spend five minutes pulling weeds and another 60 minutes sitting on a patio with a cold drink. You've guessed it, I'm a natural gardener, and I let my plants decide where to grow. Inspired by those plants, indigenous only to my backyard, I've imagined them at night happily growing under a full moon. Natural gardening is made with felt shapes stitched to a black wool background. Stitch combinations create things that grow, like flowers, leaves, and those weeds that are only found in my garden. Natural gardening is created on a black background fabric, giving it a dramatic, vibrant look. But you could also use the pattern and directions to make variations on the design, like this version on a turquoise background. In playful, freeform embroidery, I hope to encourage readers to create their own designs and to add to their love of freeform hand embroidery. The final project in Playful Freeform Embroidery is called The Nut House. This design is based on personal experience. It illustrates how I feel when the entire family is at my house with chattering adults and children racing through the house yelling at the top of their lungs. Not that I don't love my family, but it does feel like a nut house sometimes. 
The nut house depicts a bevy of ladybug beetles playing in the yard, climbing the tree, swinging from a tire swing, and enjoying a windy day at home. It also features various stitch combinations that build pattern, like those found on the rooftop, the sidewalk, and the jolly plants growing on the horizon line. The swaying tree is stitched with rows of chain stitches placed next to each other to build a solid shape. I've used a variegated blue thread to give the tree bark texture. Again, variegated pearl cotton threads are perfect for this type of freeform hand embroidery. From my house to your house, I hope you enjoy my new book, Playful Freeform Embroidery. I'm Laura Wazalowski. Thank you for joining me.